What's up guys, it's the MMA Analyst here to give you my betting picks for UFC 142. So before we get down to it, there was a little issue. Um, a small number of the people who are receiving my picks, I did send out um, like a group um, a group email, kind of like I normally do, but I, what is it called, blind carbon copy it so nobody can see what's going on. Anyways... Mistake was made. I do apologize. Nobody brought it up, but I do know that it is important for everybody to have their, you know, their privacy and whatnot. Uh, no private information was given out for those who, where it didn't happen. I'm just saying that email was sent to, so you could see some other names, right? So anyways, again, I do apologize. I could have just sent a, an email to everybody individually, but, uh, you know, I'm not trying to hide anything here. I, you know, I made a mistake. My bad. All right. So, UFC 142. Let's start with the main event, as always. Jose Aldo versus Chad Mendes. Because of the hype behind Chad Mendes and his wrestling, you're getting Jose Aldo at the best odds since when he was an underdog in his WEC debut. Crazy. Chad Mendes hasn't faced anybody nearly as good as Jose Aldo with his striking um, takedown defense. And Jose Aldo has faced people somewhat, or at least a, a person somewhat close to Chad Mendes, which is Uriah Faber. Uriah Faber is teammate of Chad Mendes. A lot of hype. I don't. I normally don't watch all of the um, the hype stuff because it can cloud judgment. People see so much talk about something, but I watched this for the first time in a long time. Just bored today. And, uh, man, they are really hyping up Chad Mendes wrestling. I mean, it's got to be scared. I mean, it's still a platinum pick for Jose Aldo, but it probably would have been a diamond. And that's why I don't watch these things because, you know, um, in all likelihood, Jose Aldo is going to be go out there and um, stop Mendes. Now, the, the big thing is, uh, you know, he does like to throw the leg kicks. Is Mendes going to be shooting on that leg, trying to get that single leg as soon as he sees as soon as it's thrown, of course. Um, but Jose Aldo's got really good takedown defense. As long as he doesn't end up on his back early in the fight, I do see him getting the win. He can stop Chad Mendez at any time. Chad Mendez is one of those wrestlers that is kind of you know confident in his striking. I know against Aldo, he's going to be looking to shoot. But I do see him... Uh, Taking some time on the feet before he, you know, trying to actually set up the takedowns. That time is going to be very difficult for him. And um, I don't know how long that's going to last, to be honest. But I think Jose Aldo will be able to spend time um, warding off the takedown defense, uh, the, warding off the uh, takedowns with, uh, you know, stuffing the takedowns. And then in the middle, doing what he does, which is striking. That's the big thing about Jose Aldo. If he wasn't very confident in his takedown defense, then he wouldn't be able to do the striking in between takedown defense, in between stuffing the takedowns. A lot of guys, they spend the entire fight stuffing takedowns. And then when they're not stuffing takedowns, they're waiting to stuff takedowns. And then they lose a decision where they never got taken down. They didn't take any damage, but they actually didn't do anything themselves. And uh, Jose Aldo is not that guy. He will throw punches, kicks, and not just little jabs. He's very confident in his ability to grapple with these wrestlers. So I see Jose Aldo either catching Chad Mendez or um, winning at least three out of five rounds. And it is a platinum pick. And I do think at minus 235, again, unless Jose Aldo actually does lose to Chad Mendez. You know what? Even if he does lose to Chad Mendez, I don't think in his next fight the odds are going to be any better than this unless it's against Chad Mendez. I think if he loses to Chad Mendez and then fights Uriah Faber, he's going to be a bigger favorite against Uriah Faber. So, I mean, the odds in this here are great for Jose Aldo. Um, next fight. Anthony Rumble Johnson versus Vitor Belfort. This is basically even. Uh, they don't know what to do. No. Uh, Rumble's normally 170 and big. Now he's going to be 185 and big. Uh, and, and, you know, How is he going to be able to do with the wrestling, though? Is he going to be able to get the takedowns? Is he going to be able to run through Vitor Belfort? <clears throat> Excuse me. Anthony Rumble Johnson hasn't ran through anybody even close to the level of skill 
um, as Vitor Belfort. Um, you know, Charlie Brenneman, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Dan Hardy, um, Yoshiyuku Yoshida, he came in uh, six pounds overweight already. So, and then, you know, I mean, he weighed in six pounds overweight and then probably was close to 200 pounds in that fight. So he might have had a th- maybe a close to a 30-pound weight advantage. Any way you look at it, it is a 41-second knockout over a guy that is nowhere near the level of uh, Vitor Belfort in stand-up and all-around mixed martial art hood. And uh, I don't see him running through anybody. Um, if he comes out here and tries to strike with Vitor Belfort, he's going to get lit up. If he tries to take Vitor Belfort down, uh, I mean, he being able to do what he did to Dan Hardy and being able to do that to somebody who has much better jujitsu, somebody who's you know, got, uh, you know, just is very well-rounded. It's just not the same. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. I think Vitor Belfort wins this fight. Uh, he can definitely catch Anthony early. If he doesn't, though, then I think that uh, he can win this fight by decision by at least beating up Rumble in the early round. And then round two and round three, just kind of winning those rounds. Um, I see a tough time for Anthony Rumble Johnson in this fight. Uh, just quickly, one thing you got to realize is whenever they go to Brazil or to Japan or basically anywhere outside of the UK, outside of the United States, outside of Canada, um, where they basically have these really big, like humongous pa- pockets of fans with a lot of fighters like Japan and Brazil, they're sending people over to get their ass whooped by the people who live in that country so that... The people who live in that country can have more of a fun time. If you go to a fight and, like, for example, they sent seven Division One wrestlers to fight seven Brazilian strikers. And the strikers ended up on their back all day and all losing. Everybody's going to leave and be like, that sucked. And then the... The news the next morning in Brazil will be, you know, UFC came, it was boring, you know, our guys lost, and it's just not as good as putting somebody like Husum or Polaris up against Mike Masenzio, or, um, you know, Edson Barbosa up against um, Terry Adam, or I think Vitor Belfort up against Anthony Rumble Johnson. Now, it's not the same. Rumble is much more difficult, um, a, you know, a, a test than, let's say, uh, Masenzio for Polaris. But uh, that's basically what's happening. So, I mean, that's that's just one thing to think about. Anyways, uh, Husmer Polaris versus Mike Masenzio would be a diamond pick if uh, Polaris wasn't such a ridiculously um, just harebrained... Is that the right way? Bird brain? I don't know. Just He just does things that don't make sense. He'll finish a fight before the ref says stop. He'll finish a... He'll wait too long after ref says stop. He'll literally just stop fighting, look up to the ref and get knocked out. In all likelihood, Husmer Polaris will go out here and get the submission of the night. That's my pick. Husmer Polaris, heel hook. You don't have to go that deep into it, but a submission of the night over Mike Misenzio. That's in all likelihood. But... Paul Harris has already stopped fighting two separate times in the middle of a fight, one time costing him the fight. So uh, he's just very unpredictable. His fighting abilities are predictable. He wants to get the fight to the ground. He's wild. He's got amazing wrestling. Mike Masenzio cannot really do anything about anything that Husuma Polaris is bringing to the table. The only reason it's not a diamond pick is because Husuma Polaris period. Like, that's the only reason. Like, it's, it's a platinum pick because of Husmer Polaris, but it's not a diamond pick because of Husmer Polaris. So, I do have Polaris winning this. I do have him getting the submission of the night. Pretty simple. Mike Masenzio is a grappler. He's a black belt. He's going to get his leg ripped off. Polaris, the odds are not good, though. Minus 500, that's not good. That sucks. You know, it is what it is, though. Eric Silva versus Carlos Prater. Also, pretty bad odds. If you want to maybe put two fights together where these guys will... Oh, man. they ha- I mean, if they don't win, we're looking at John Fitch getting knocked out or Chan Sung Jung knocking out Mark Hominick. Like, those things just aren't actually supposed to happen. And when they do, it's massive upsets. These two guys, Eric Silva and Husuma Polaris, should in all likelihood win their fights. And if they don't, it will be a big upset. 
Um, I think Eric Silva will basically be better than Carlo Prater in everything. And uh, if you want to put those two fights together, Polaris and Silva, that's probably uh, you know a solid two, um, two, two fight parlay. I do have Eric Silva winning this fight. Uh, I think he's probably going to finish it by um, TKO. Probably going to be early. That's another thing you can look at, obviously, is um, is it going to finish? Is the fight going to go the distance? I do not see Carlo Prado taking this to the decision. I do not see Husama Polaris letting this go to the decision. Um, so, yeah, you know, Eric Prater, diamond pick. Husama Polaris, uh, platinum pick. Edson Barbosa versus Terry Adam. This is a good fight. Uh, also, some pretty good odds for... Edson Barbosa, his striking is going to be better than um, than Terry Edom. Uh, will he be able to stuff the takedowns and do what is necessary on the feet? I think so. I think Terry Edom. It's not like Terry Edom is one of those American wrestlers, uh, Division One wrestlers, take you down, top control, you know, heavy hit pressure, all that crazy stuff, and you just get held down. Uh, he's not. He's from the UK. He's uh, you know he's more jujitsu um, oriented. Uh, I think Barbosa does have a purple belt, anyways. But I don't think it's going to matter. I think he's got this fight's going to stay on the feet, and I think that uh, Barbosa is going to get the win. I don't know if he's going to finish him, but I think he will get the win, um, and it is going to be a gold pick for Edson Barbosa. Next, Sam Stelt versus Tiago Tavares. Uh, simple here. Um, Tiago Tavares is either going to win this fight by uh, decision, uh, by being able to push Sam Stelt up against the cage, take him down, put him on his back, that kind of stuff. Or Sam Stelt's going to go out there and pick Tavares apart. I'm going to go with pick Tavares apart. He is the uh, underdog. Um, I think just with his, uh, I mean, his, it's not like his grappling is bad. Uh, and it's not like Tiago Tavares' uh, wrestling is amazing. I do have Sam Stout, um, you know, keeping this on the feet, doing enough. And uh, the biggest fear for me, really, uh, you know, other than maybe being wrong, is that it's a close decision that they give to the hometown guy, which is Tavares. But I think it will go to the decision, and I think that Sam Stout should be able to do enough to get the win. Um, and it is going to be a gold pick for Sam Stout. Gabriel Gonzaga versus uh, Ednaldo Oliveira. This is going to be a silver pick for Gabriel Gonzaga. Now, there's a lot of hype for Oliveira. Uh, you know, he's six foot seven. He's a really amazing striker. He's all these different things. I've watched four of his fights. Uh, he is not... I don't see what they're talking about. I'm not going to say he's not that good. I'm going to say I don't see what the hype is about. He's big, yes. I've seen him get put on his back over and over by guys. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't know what the big hype is. And again, I say this from having seen four of his more recent fights. And uh, now Gonzaga is coming off of his quote-unquote retirement. Uh, I mean, we know that he's not actually, you know, you know he, he retired, but how long has he been? He fought October 8th, 2011. So, you know, it, he, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, he lost a Brendan Schaub uh, decision. Junior DeSantos knocked out by the by the champion now. Um, he, you know, he didn't have the best time in the world uh, in, in basically ever since his uh, Mirko Krokop knockout, which kind of catapulted him into a certain level of competition where he wasn't really able to hang when it really came down to it. But in this fight here, um, I do think he'll be able to get the fight to the ground. Ednaldo Oliveira, again, he is a striker. He is pretty good at all. But I don't see exactly how he's that good. He's very wild with his strikes. Um, he's just a big, sloppy heavyweight. Gabe is coming off of a little bit of time off. But I do think that he can get the win. It is going to be a silver pick for Gabriel Gonzaga. Yuri Alcantara over Michiharo Omagawa diamond pick. Uh, Yuri Alcantara... Tough fighter, you know, good on the hand, good with the hands, good with uh, with um, submissions, you know, 12 submissions, 11 knockouts. Um, just really done a, a really good job, you know, becoming what I would consider to be a very well-rounded fighter. 
Um, and he'll be fighting Michihiro, Michihiro Omegawa, who is, uh, you know, he's had his difficulties. Um, he's a grappler who just hasn't in the UFC been able to use his grappling to his advantage. I don't think it's going to happen here either. I do see him uh, getting beat up pretty bad. Um, this could probably be fight of the night simply because Omagawa does know how to take a beating. And I do see Alcantara putting a beating on him. It is a diamond pick for Alcantara. And um, yeah, we'll see. Um, Ricardo Funch versus Mike Powell. This is a do not bet. Why? I mean, Mike Powell should win, but... Uh, Minus 475 for Mike Pyle? Uh, no, that's not a good one at all. Um, and then uh, Felipe Antares, Antonio Carvalho, also a do not bet. Um, you know, Carvalho's a you know, solid prospect from Canada. Felipe Antares is just uh, you know another tough Brazilian. Uh, I wouldn't put my bet, my money on uh, either of these guys. So there you go, UFC 142. It looks like it's going to be a pretty exciting fight reg uh, card, regardless. Um, a lot of close fights, which is why you have the odds being the way they are. Most of the time, you have more of these, you know, Husamir Polaris, Eric Silva situations. But here, you've got Aldo at minus 235. You've got Vitor and Johnson basically being even. Um, Edson Barbosa minus 280. That's close. Yuri Alcantara, again, a diamond pick at minus 200. You know, I'm very happy with that. Um, Sam Stout, Tiago Tavares, a, a range between plus 120 and minus 140. So, I mean, all over, it's uh, it's a pretty solid. Even the Gonzaga minus 125. Things have basically aligned so that uh, there's money to be made. Good luck. And, uh, you know, the situation. I mean, it's important. Peace.